Welcome to another episode of Chasing the Wind. I'm Pastor Mark. Thanks for joining me today. Let's see how the wind is blowing today. I uh, recently had a scripture come to my mind, and God brings these scriptures to my mind every now and then. And I, it just, maybe this is for you today, um, wh whoever is watching, listening, whoever you're sharing this with, share these videos so they can get more, more uh, activity and viewership and all that good stuff. Uh, Galatians 4.19 is what has been uh, sticking in my mind a little bit lately. And the NIV, that is the Nazarene Infallible Version, says this, My dear children, for Galatians 4.19, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you. Another way that is sometimes translated is Christ is fully developed in you. Uh, recently read something is that, yes, salvation is a, an, it is an act. It is, first of all, an act of God. It's not our act. It is an act of God. Christ did, uh, provided the salvation on the cross. It's done. It's done. We just have to decide if we're going to live in it or we're going to live out of it. But this, this idea that Christ is being developed, fully developed in us. If uh, someone reached out to me recently and uh, they had gone through a little bit of a hard time about three years ago and, and they were texting me to thank me for being with them on that journey. And they made the comment, you know, it gives me hope that maybe God can still use me. And my response was, well, you're still here, so I'm sure he can. Um, he's not going to waste the crisis that you went through. He doesn't waste the crisis any of us goes through. And many of us, we've been through a crisis these last two and a half, three years. Uh, just the crisis of what's going on in our country and the, the, the COVID thing and all that stuff. And so we're, you know, we've been through some traumatic stuff and this, is, this has tested us a little bit. There's been a great falling away. People have just said, I'm done. They're done. God is not delivered. We're so used to kind of an easy Christianity in America. And, and we forget. And, and one of my concerns is that we are not seeking to become more like Christ. I read something recently that we, the reason, you know, God does not ask us to worship him because uh, he's needy or he has some sort of mother or father issues because he's God. That wouldn't apply to him anyway. But the reason is because we become like who we worship and revere and keep our eyes on. Little kids used to be, you know, my, my heroes have always been cowboys. Well, now it's, it's not the Dallas Cowboys, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm in the Buffalo area, big Buffalo Bills area around here and so there are people that have who you know their eyes are on josh allen or dawson knox or some of these other people and you know they they want to be just like them they're going to be football stars whatever that's great nice ambition to have i suppose but our ultimate ambition should be to be like christ to be fully developed that christ be fully developed in us in other words that we become more and more like christ and that's going to happen as we spend more and more time with him. That is going to happen more and more as we get into his word and learn how he lived his life as we follow him. As we have good mentors in this Christian life, I can look back over my life and I had good Christian mentors in my life. And, uh, you know, I, you know, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, okay? So if you're watching this video, follow me as I follow Christ. If there's something that ain't Christ, you know, don't follow it. And I hope that won't be the case. But anyway, it, you get the idea. It is God's desire for us to become Christ-like. Not just, not just get saved, but that we become holy as he is holy. And that can be a little bit of a tricky word for people because they think holier than thou. And that's not what it means. It means to become uh, more like Jesus. And that is what God wants. If God did not desire for us to quit sinning, 
He wouldn't have sent Jesus. You know, I don't, I don't agree with this idea that we have to sin every day. We might, but we don't have to. That's why Christ came, was to deliver us from sin and death and hell. We don't have to do it. And what a, what a terrible way to live anyway. Well, probably it's going to happen sooner or later, so I might as well just do it and get it over with. You know, th- that can lead to all sorts of things. And, and it's like, don't think about, it's like I said, tell us, don't think about pink elephants. You know, you're going to think about pink elephants. And, and sometimes we can get so caught up in, well, I, I, what I'm not supposed to do that we forget about what we're supposed to. I heard a, a guy on YouTube, an old cowboy, an old wrangler, talking about that um, one of the characteristics of, of, a, of a man is that he is a good man. And he used a wonderful example. He used kind of like a, if you have a, a little bar graph, if you will, and in the middle is zero, and on one side is negative numbers, and on the other side are positive numbers. He goes, a lot of times in Christianity, what we focus on is, is, not, is, is eliminating the negative numbers and moving back toward the middle, toward zero. But then we never move over to the other side, which is the positive stuff. So it's no wonder that people have gotten the idea that holiness is about what I don't do. Or as we used to say when I was in college, we don't smoke, drink, or chew, or date girls that do. Um, and less about what we do. Is, has, have we become, has the church become more about what we're against than what we're for? And shouldn't, it, shouldn't we be kind of talking about both? And so we can, just because we've gotten rid of some evil or bad things in our life, sinful things in our life, we've dealt with the broken things in our life, but if we have not gone on to good works, we are not saved by works, but saved to works. If we're not doing the things that God wants us to do and doing the things, doing them with him, we've kind of missed it. If we are not going on to perfection, as Paul said, um, and perfection, see, people get hung up on that word too. It means mature. It can be translated mature or complete. You know, people don't understand holiness terminology. They mess it up and they get all hung up on it. And what's funny is, is, is then they talk about it, but they're, oh, I can't use that word. John Wesley wrote a book called A Plain Account of Christian Perfection. He was talking about maturity, going on to be fully developed in Christ, that Christ is fully developed in us. That is what God desires for us. Max Licato, or Licato, however you want to put it. You say Licato, oh, I say Licato had a book years ago called uh, um, uh, God Loves You Just the Way You Are, but he refuses to let you stay that way. He wants you to be just like Jesus. And that was the title of the book, Just Like Jesus. Um, And that means that Christ be fully developed in us, fully developed in us. If you're still here, if you're watching this, Christ is working on you. Cooperate with him. Yield to him. Uh, surrender to him. There's a lot of people, as I said, are, are they're, you know, they're frustrated and, and they're, of all that's going on, they're saying, I'm, I'm just done. I'm done with God. I'm done with everything. Well, here's the thing. That's not a bad place to be. It's called surrender. It's called, God, I'm done. I don't know what else to do. I've got to turn to you. I need your help. So that's where I need you to be today. That's, I don't need you to be there. That's where I want you to be today. I don't want you to need it. That means you're doing it for me. I don't want you to do it for me. I want you to do it for you and for the Lord, because God is so much more for us. So wind chasers, keep chasing the wind because the wind is chasing you and wants you, wants Christ to be fully developed in you. So yield to that and let God do what he wants to do in your life today. Until next time, I'm Pastor Mark. Grace and peace.